face of that is low rag. You can be like my hump, you know, and then just wipe my face <laughs> off. Straight. Might have to take my teeth off and go over once over. Yeah. 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 I don't think anybody, even a visitor from another planet, has not heard about the food. their work. That's a trade secret. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone knows where we do it. They just don't know how we do it. That's yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? Rocking this boat. Rocking the boat. about people like you who love graffiti. I think you're crazy just like the people who do graffiti. <laughs> what do you want to know about? How did you start? My art teacher in high school kind of started it. Blame, blame the art teacher and the Board of Education. They started me. The city of New York started me graphing. So usually in high school, they do encourage you. But totally, but they don't usually but. encourage the New York City subway no, system. not at all. As a medium. When you hold these people up and say they're artists, and you put them very much in the public light and lionize them, I think you have to realize that what you're doing is establishing them as peer models. They begin to say, ah, oh, that's my goal in life. But where do they practice it? They're going to practice it on the subways. They're going to practice it on the public buildings. What's different about that than holding up as peer models somebody who's a successful gambler or somebody who has been successful in, in, in any other kind of illegal narcotics and so on? And if you show them with all the trappings of success and that becomes a peer, you are having a whole generation of people who begin to copy that. And you know, it's the age-old thing they've been saying, that graffiti represents the fact that the system is going out of control. And as more and more graffiti goes on and the layers build up, well, that just stands for how, how much more we're losing control. Well, this shit is a bad, well, not bad, you know, you have some fuck ups that come and break the car windows, you know, kids. and, you know, they mess up the train, you know, that's not us. We can't do nothing about that. Yo, man. We have a lot of respect for the trains. Not the system, mind you, but the trains themselves. And I think every graffiti artist out has a real understanding of how, you know, both how the system works and how each train works. In certain ways, they are more knowledgeable. But it's a peripheral knowledge and it's a topical knowledge and it has no depth or substance to it. I was mandated to come in front of this camera, Tony. I'm a soldier and I do as I'm told. As a professional police officer, and specifically one who is actively involved in crime prevention, I have misgivings about this mission, if it were. That's a personal a feeling as opposed to official departmental position. Okay? You sure? And that, that car me and Kel there, we put trash there, we caught you sleeping. <laughs> They're equating graffiti writers with every other kind of criminal on the train. For the most part, almost 99% of this is criminal conduct. Secondly, these youngsters were tracked over a three year period. And I believe the figure is correct, over 40% of them went on to greater antisocial conduct. We did arrest uh, 
uh, during a two-month period, over 400 kids who had uh, committed acts of vandalism and graffiti on our system in an effort to get a profile of who they were, and it didn't tell us very much other than that they were young and that they were, did not have criminal records. Uh, so they were not people, they were not the same people that commit uh, individual felonies on our passengers. People don't have it in their mind to go into the yards and break windows and destroy the trains. Without the train, they don't have anything to write on, so why would they want to stop the train from running? If they want to court danger, that's an excellent way to do it. Subway tracks are not a play place. The transit authority was somewhat curious as to how we were going to come down here, and I do believe they were quite shocked when they seen how easy the entry was through the uh, exit that we came in. That's just one of millions of easy paths to the iron horses. We're now coming around and people are a little annoyed, a little tired of this messing in the subway. I think they really are. And I am afraid that he is going to wind up in trouble down there. Most of these kids that he's with, they're really, they're not doing anything. They don't feel like doing anything. Almost nobody goes to school on any kind of regular basis. There are, like I said, you know, lots and lots and lots of very talented people out there that can draw, right? And if he is not going to do something to add to the talent that he has, it's not going to do him any good. Oh! Yo, what did you do that? You did a Halloween, Halloween night! Shit. No, me, dead, skin, me, three, K, two, part. We all chilling in the yard, you know? It is no more an art form than when you go uh, to uh, uh, Egypt and you uh, go and you uh, uh, visit the pyramids or uh, the Sphinx and you find uh, someone putting his name uh, there back in the 1800s or uh, earlier. That was graffiti and today we'll look at it and we'll say, well isn't that interesting? It was graffiti then, it is graffiti now and anyone uh, who does the same thing on our uh, city walls is in fact engaging in graffiti. Shouldn't do it. Sometimes they get snotty, they tell us leave the yard and all that. We leave, <laughs> we come back an right. hour later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Niggas up? think we went home and Little shit. Third rail trap. Let them build all the fences they want, and they'll still see fresh shit. You, you know, we didn't invent the wheel. I mean, good fencing, proper lighting, proper security management procedures are like apple pie and motherhood. The remover is, 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 a, is a can, a big can, and it takes off any kind of paint. It's, it's, they're, they're made it for graffiti. Go ahead. <laughs> so, 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 so then the train got, the train got like, it's like a clear, a clear plastic stuff they got on top of the paint. Me and my partner, Shik, we used to spray the trains with it, and, and, and that, that takes off the paint. Then, then you, you, you use some primer, you do your piece, and when your piece is finished, then you, 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 you throw some varnish on top. Then when it goes to the buffing machine, you know, that they try to clean it up, it'll pass two, maybe five or six times, ten times, and they'll be like surprised because it can't come off. Oh shit, don't come off. It's, kind of, it's like tank in the anti-tank. I mean, you uh, hope, well, you uh, build a tank, and you say nobody can uh, get uh, into that tank, can, nobody can destroy it. And then they build a, an anti-tank weapon and it destroys it, and they build a bigger tank. Uh, that's what life is all about. Oh, there was a big meeting between um, the, the MTA and the, and the, writers. And the graffiti artists. I, I think that was like Ten a setup. Minutes. For what? To meet the writers? No, nah, that because right there, right there, the DTs can see your face. I don't care. Nah, but look they at know it, the way I look. But look at it this way: if, <laughs> if nobody showed up, you know how bad we would look. Like Mitch, he didn't, he didn't go because he says right there they see your face. They see you any day on the train or one of them DTs, and then they see you with a bag. You think they're not gonna tell you what you got in the bag That's when they right. know your face? You're busted right there. Those that continue, hopefully we will arrest them, convict them, and send them to a work service camp for five days and see if that doesn't deter them. Definitely, that's like, that's a bummer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't want to go to Camp Koch, <laughs> not me. <laughs> whether the paint is for graffiti, which is an art form, or whether the paint is for any other purpose, it's still stealing. And this is the on-the-job training that these toys are getting. 
I've been to community meetings where people have said, well, why don't you use the Saudi Arabian solution? And I said, excuse me? And they said, well, when they catch someone doing a crime in Saudi Arabia, they cut off their hands. And I looked askance. And it's kind of frightening to think that a large majority of the population feels that strongly about it. What do you, what do you feel about the, uh, uh, the reaction in the village voice of the traffic worker? The, uh, the critic or whatever from the voice thought it was pretty humorous, you know? The letter was written by a gentleman um, who was uh, responsible at that time for uh, manual cleanup of the interiors of six cars. Well, yeah, the letter said that, um, that they had a big red pipe, that they were waiting for me, that if they caught me, they would split my head open, that they were goddamn tired of this wanton vandalism, and until other publications like The Village Voice stop treating these two-bit assholes like heroes, this vandalism will never cease. To him, I would have to say, uh, if you're sick and tired of burning your hands, buffing my graffiti, then simply don't do it. He should not be forced to work under hazardous conditions. That is a situation that is far out of my hands. Let me just uh, say that you never uh, end uh, the problem. I'm hopeful uh, that we will uh, reduce the problem and get a handle on it and uh, um, hopefully uh, there will be a, a great uh, diminution of uh, graffiti in the city of New York. Do I expect to wipe it all out? The answer is no. My name is Trudy Mason. I'm Director of Government Affairs and Community Relations for the MTA. I've gotten to meet some of the writers. They heard about me. As one of them told me, they said I was a cool dude and somebody who they could talk to. Some of it, and this is my own personal view only, is not bad artwork, but again, it is doing something illegal. It is doing something, uh, it is vandalism, no matter how you slice it. Yo, <laughs> why do we do pieces here? <laughs> because everybody could see it from the highway, man. You know that. It what was a virgin it? wall. You think this shit will be here for a long time? Yeah, oh man, it's gonna be here for a hundred years. But to go back further, the first original outsize was more or less like uh, Joe, Joe, Joe and Joe and Joey and Billy and something like that. Uh, you know, girlfriend and boyfriend thing. You know, like they, everybody used to write on the walls. That was the first outsize. Mr. Paul, remember Mr. Stay Paul? High Stay high was like one of the first people to take his tag and like form it on the outside. Of the train. Make it make it a little wider and a little more bubbly. Yeah. So that it wasn't just that one line out of the can that he had an actual outline. Stay high, Chi Chi with 33, Flick. Yep. And um what's his name? Sunny 107. Doc cool. Big 249. Um Big 149. And a few other old Case fighters two. from the old days. Case two was yeah. an original Michael, from the back Michael, of the old Michael, days. Michael, Purple Haze, Moses. When you started home. I was 14. What year was that? That was in early, late 76. All right, this is a, wait, hold it. Stop the machines, please, stop. All right, Bill, what are you doing on my piece, Bill? That's one of your old extensions. What? Yeah. That's one of your old extensions there. Yeah, but that's what yeah. you like, old stuff. Yeah, I like that, I like that old stuff. By the way, this is a, <laughs> Come on now, nah, I can't, I can't do this. Billy 167, he was back around in the old days. When did you start? Uh, about 1970. You started on canvases, then you moved on to trains. Well, eventually. Right, right? Depending on how you're talking, because I went to the trains first. No, first we both started out doing insides. And those then trains, you, but then aren't you, those but trains? But then you never did a piece. Aren't those trains? Until you did Tell me those aren't trains. Yes, those are trains, but you Very never did good. a piece. Very do you do, good. Do you do insides on your canvases? Yeah. No, I put a not tag. really. <laughs> I put but a tag on my them. canvas. I don't want to. Other people made up wild style that was good, you know. Other people made up crazy, you know, bubble legs and all that type of stuff. I always like the style, such as real hard rock block commuters, you know, like computer. Do it nice, you know. Well, you Boy, notice no that dial. you notice that knock look like one of his characters. Yeah, he do. <laughs> See, we be dogging the ones, man. Dogging the one yard and shit. Them scheme and spank. Mm -hmm. Scab two intact. He's either going to wind up in trouble down in that subway, 
with Transit Authority Police or, have, or getting himself hurt some other way, or he is going to wind up hurting somebody or getting hurt in these ridiculous fights that they have about somebody crossing them out, which is absolutely ridiculous. Vicky, what is this about Captain DJ going over you? What is it? I don't know. I was friends with them, but I don't know what happened. He just... I called him up, I, you know, I mean, he was talking to PJ, and at first everything was all right. I told him what I was doing to the Sixes. I was making it colorful, no more, you know, destruction and throw-ups and whatnot. And he said, okay, but I still am going to do it on the Sixes. I said, go ahead, but, you know, I'm going over them. You know, I'm going over whatever throw-ups I see. I'm going over my own, you know. Um, everyone's crossing each other out, and I kind of wish it was all... Squashed. Kind of squashed, you know, all that bad stuff. But you can't have graffiti without, you know, bad news. The people who can do good things don't want to do them on these lines because they know they're going to get gone over. You know, Tracy told me that uh, in the old days there were rules in graffiti. And the big rule was you never went over an, old, an older writer. I've been, I've been writing a while, and um, I guess a lot of guys are like, um, I mean, that definitely just crossed my stuff out. There's, there's no, no doubt about it. It's a sign of non-talent, obviously. It's a sign of someone trying to gain their fame by slashing someone who's either already got fame or who's just someone who's just trying to, you know, get his work together. I mean, it's a bit depressing when you do a whole car, you go down there, you know what I mean? You spend six, seven hours, and then someone comes along with a, a magic marker and puts a line through it, you know? It's stupid. You know? Why do you say Esplanade is your, your tunnel? Because it is. Been, people have been piecing in there for a long time. Yeah. DIA was there years ago. DIA was? Yeah. Yeah, but if I was Crash there, they would have been. Crash. Piecing. I get crash respect. Tell you the truth, I can't remember one crash I went over. People I went with, lines to it. You know? Things like that, but that's, that's life. I can tell them not to. You know, just like they don't tell me not to. One's looks like shit. That's because I ain't been on him in a while. That's why. It's still happening, it's just not happening well. Cap, Cap is making a problem on the most respected lines. Riders came to my parents' house and crossed out my parents' house in my mother's car. That's how out of hand it gets these days. And I don't even live there. They threaten his mother, my mother, us. It's part of the whole war. They don't like my friends. I don't like their, their people and uh, we all go over each other, you know, at one time or another. But, but they go out of their way to go over people. You know, that's all they go and do. They, you know, get their paint together and just go look for other people's pieces to go over. You know, fresh pieces, they love them fresh. And uh, you can get hurt for that. <laughs> and they will get hurt for that. You know. There's always gonna be that competitive thing and the jealousy, but that breeds better work sometimes as well, you know? Under, the, under that condition to deal with as well as Transit Authority and what have you, Ed Koch. The case next to the pool, justice is adequate. The yeah. board even got out of the yard with the dog. Case was trying to prove something there. I don't know what he was trying to prove to people that he can come to my tunnel, Esplanade, and get over on two whole cars and let them pull out without even me getting over on that shit. You know what I mean? I mean, he was trying to pull something like how much of a king Case he is. Tell you the truth, nobody has style like him. Yeah. All right? Why can't you let them run? Why? Well, uh, it's a story about Case. We, well, I was with Colt and Cash. We met them in the Esplanade station. Everything was cool. They did their burners. Me and Slip did top to bottoms. We left. All of a sudden, bing, bang, boom. The next day, the top to bottoms are rolling. And all you see is tags and crosses over it with the same exact colors that Case was using. Then I seen Case. He tried to tell me something that it was um, bumper and dubin, which are famous for crossing out people's pieces. Then one day I was coming back and I was going by the bench, 149th. I, I got off the train and I started talking to the to a Case, telling me to get the people out of there. Then he started talking about some shit that I'm a big toy, I'm a big toy white boy. Okay, I'm white and all this shit. Maybe he doesn't consider me as good as himself, which is true. I'm not as good as him, but I have a different way of bombing. You know? I can't see that shit where you have to start pulling at, because I was always cool with him. You know, so that totally destroyed everything I had. I was I was going over to TNT. 
everybody who wrote TNT, TC5. Is you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't care if Green Roll Giant come by here, I will stomp him. You know what I'm saying? Kick a mud hole in him and still keep kicking. You know what I'm saying? Believe that? Word him up. <laughs> Niggas is surprised, niggas you sleep on me, better hold on, hold on to the bed tight. Yeah, I'm a king, I'm left. If he perceives himself as like standing on a throne, there ain't no one gonna take it from him, you know what I mean? King Case is king if he perceives himself that way, you know? But he can definitely say that, and I don't think there's anyone in graffiti who would question him, you know what I mean? <laughs> So why do you go over people? Some people that never did anything to you. Why well, did you ever start? Realize the the problems that you've started with a lot of toy riders that they look up to you, and now they realize that going over people is the only way they get fame. No. And now there's wars left and right. No, I... Somebody has to influence these young riders. That that's not the way to go about it. To go over pretty stuff, whole cars, window down. He got he goes over deaf niggas, man, and writes a toy. Man, that shit is crazy, man. It's crazy. It's <laughs> now he goes over his own boys that he hung out with, man. That's crazy. But is it worth it all this to have to look over your back all the time? Look behind your back all the time? You got right. people, so many people after you. They got me after them too. You know? So they gotta look. You know? How about a truth? Truth, stop it. What are you joking? I'm gonna I'm gonna trust a bunch of people to have my back. I'm walking down the tracks. Kill him. The best way to get rid of Cap is just kill him instead of making peace with him. Anybody That's what ever, everybody says. Anybody ever take a shot at you? Shots at me? No. It's Why? usually the other way around. Well, doesn't that say something to you? I think, I think it says that these people ain't got no balls. I try and kill people, they should try and kill me too. If they don't, they're stupid because I'm going to get them first. That's all that means. You know, because people start playing with you, they, they think they can get over on you. And you just have to dog all of their stuff. That's the only way I know to get respect is to... Once people play with you, you have to hurt them. Otherwise, they think they're gonna get over on you every time. I don't think anybody that writes graffiti deserves respect. Kaz, K-A-S-S. -S. Hey, I brought Cap up because I was the first time we ever did a piece was me and Cap together. The first time ever touching a can with him, we were walking down Esplanade and we decided, hey, let's go do something. So I did a cast with him, and really he wasn't he wasn't nothing. He used to walk around with a little El Marco, believe it or not, walking around and. You know, little posts from post to post, so I 34, WA, little things like this. And he wanted to get into graffiti. So I told him, listen, I draw you a couple of sketches here, and we go out and we do it. And that's how, what Cap is now. If you can do your, if you can do your work, I mean, do it. But if you're gonna fiddle that about it, do little crafts about this, going over people, it ain't even worth it. Please, that's mentioned, let's not okay. mention toys. They should not get no fame. You know, in the middle of the 70s, when Lee started breaking with the whole cars, he started a whole new thing on these lines. And these became the lines where you came to do your best shit. Since most of the people be living up here anyway and come from around here, you know, I mean, the Bronx, you know, you can't help but know that the Bronx is where most of it came from. And this, you know, this is it. This is the Bronx. You hear number one. People from Sweden, Japan, England, France have said to me, uh, that they think of graffiti as New York. It is New York to them, in a positive way. I think they're a minority who think it is a positive uh, force. New York is clearly a city of tremendous diversity, and there are lots of things that some individuals like about certain parts of the city. I think on balance, when you look at it in its entirety, there is no question that to most New Yorkers and to most people who visit New York, uh, it is a symbol of a decline and a symbol of deterioration. It does not have a positive impact. It's something that we as a society are able to control. I think it's disgusting. I think it takes away from the beauty of the city. I think it's uh, a shame. They should make them clean it up. <laughs> I'm embarrassed when out of towners or people from the other country come over here. I feel like they're looking at dirty filth. I mean, even the poorest person doesn't have to make filth and pick their things out on other people and make them suffer for it. You think it's only poor people? No, 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 no. A lot of them give it a bad name because they're just doing it and they do it real quick and they get it done and it looks sloppy and it makes the trains look like garbage. There's too many outlaws and not enough artists. We 
you ever involved in it yourself? <laughs> Many years ago. No, this is this is very bad. I mean, really, really bad. Gives, a, gives New York City a bad reputation. You can't even see the stuff. It's all painted up too. So sometimes you wind up missing your stuff. I mean, if this is supposed to be artistic, they should have it somewhere separate, you know, a separate place for it. You know, because they are all extremely artistic, in my opinion. I think if they're going to write graffiti on the train, they should at least make it look nice. I think that the idea of having uh, police dogs where they keep the cars, that's what I would want. Well. There's some of the artwork that you see in the sides of the cars, I think it's beautiful. I, I see nothing wrong with it. For Futura 2000 in particular. Futura's with a clash right now. It's funny, there's their art behind their concerts and stuff. I work at ITC, I'm in uh, accounting. Uh, some of it's not too bad. You know, some of the drawings are pretty good. They could do, if they could do something to get these kids to use this talent in another way, it would be nice, you know? Some of the stuff is really very good. Yeah. I like it, personally, myself. It's expression. People express themselves. It's the colors, mainly. It's beautiful work on the outside. No way they're going to fix the trains. No way. I feel the trains are not on time. No way. What do you want to know? Like graffiti. Graffiti? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that, that, that a war exists unless there is a combative spirit on both sides. And whereas we want to uh, get rid of the graffiti, we have no one to, uh, uh, to, to combat. And therefore, I don't think there is that, that sense of war. There's a sense of frustration at the transit authority, but there's not a sense of we want to go out and, and um, uh, really uh, kill these kids. We want to we want to get them to s direct their energies somewhere else and to stop touching uh, our property. I don't think any cop who's um, assigned to a graffiti unit is going to risk his neck for a graffiti writer or just want to help a graffiti writer. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think it is this. Not at all. I make a very strong presentation on this car. I call it a cancer. I also say that it is only a small part of graffiti that I've seen so much. Well, we hope the peer pressure is going to happen through some of the media work that we're doing, where we have people, and, and, and partly in uh, television and partly in radio campaigns, who are saying, make your mark in society, not on society. And the kinds of people that we've used in that media campaign are appealing to what we would call peer pressure. In other words, we have come out of the same environments of many of you who are doing graffiti. We do not think it's a good way to succeed. We think there are other ways to succeed. And I feel that's a very important way of attacking a certain segment of the group. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fast, and he's not. I'm Daze, and he wish he could be me. This is the first graffiti show, the first totally legitimate graffiti, graffiti show in a gallery yeah. in, in a respected Soho. gallery. In a respected gallery. So it proves that graffiti is legitimate art. What do you say? I think you're right. Thank you, Boris. The money is important to me as, as much, much as, as the really, exposure. Yeah, exposure, exposure really like counts. stretching my, you know, my imagination to its limits. This is very funny. It's a crash piece. He wishes his mother had it. This is a very humorous graffiti piece done by Wasp One, one of the senior members of Graffiti Productions. It has a lot of the old writers cast. That's the guys because it beginning. dates back to the original graffiti movement. It wasn't really artistic. It was just the idea of getting around, getting a name all over the city. Getting your name established. This is funny. Need you go anymore? It's a design for a doormat. This is done by me. You can see he did this with his eyes closed. You really focus him on the back of eyes. This is something a guy like him only dreams about. I'm Dr. Ruth Douglas Mann, and I'm a psychotherapist and analyst. I feel that this is an expression of people who have a need for identity. 
And I think that this is a constructive expression of it. I don't believe that Carol Bellamy's idea of putting them in jail, making them wash subways will work. The more you punish these children, who tend to be somewhat rebellious, the more they're going to do it. By taking something like this and making them feel worthy and teaching them techniques and giving them money, you'll change them, you'll make society a better place, and you'll produce a whole new generation of artists. Always take the constructive approach. Thank you. I started writing graffiti about three years ago when I was in college because I was kind of like, I needed something to do. I started writing funky graffiti, which is mostly like hieroglyphics, the funky kind of graffiti, the kind you really can't understand. And then eventually I evolved into this New York style graffiti. That's what we call it in Philadelphia. We forget about the chains because we know after about three months they're going to take them right off. That'll be a waste of our paint and time we spent putting it up. So what we're doing, we're putting it on clean walls and rooftops. That's about it. And now I'm here to like kind of find out a few new ideas which I can take back to Philadelphia and new styles to make graffiti more of a color for art. Nice, really nice. This is, this is a, a roots art form. Something that comes from the street, something that you don't go to school to learn for years and years. This is something that comes from the heart and something that comes from the street. And that's where I think its, it's value comes from. But this art does have antecedents in other kinds of art. It's been compared to pop art. It... I find it, though, much less ostentatious than pop art. Pop art, when I think of pop art, I think of Warhol doing silk screening, having silk screen done for him by, you know, a hundred Warholites. I think of uh, his Campbell's Soup Can thing, or Peter Max. I don't, I don't think this is pop art. I think this is popular art. Pop art was more of an attitude, it has, has much more of an attitude than graffiti. Graffiti is a street form more than anything else. Pop art was a way to legitimize, I think, bullshit art. I think to call them anything less than artists when they're displaying such an, a phenomenal artistic talent is just kidding yourself. I think something like this on the side of a train can be beautiful. I'm not on TV. Like I, I'm on. I was like, Viva Rock, Viva Rock. Oh, oh my God, I'm Ryan. That is me. Huh. <laughs> That's me. That's the way I look sometimes. And it's New Wave Diva because I'm throwing it in all the bullshit graffiti artists' face. Those downtown Greenwich Village types who think they're really down with graffiti and call themselves New Wave. I am New Wave because I'm out there painting and they're not. And that's that. Alright, you can do a piece and still, you can do one piece and bomb much insides, like 20 cars, 50, 100 cars, and people will still say you want um, the same amount is up as if you was to bomb insides if you do a couple of pieces. So you know they come out even. You know, a certain amount of insides is equal to a piece, a certain amount of pieces. Like I said, the answers that he's giving is absolutely ridiculous. That he's, he's, he's up, he's this, he's that. I don't even know. The answer what, I don't that I'm giving know. is the answers to the questions. They are not ridiculous. I don't even know. Just because you don't know what I'm talking about does not make it ridiculous. You finished talking? Definitely. But um, me, Shy, my man, Cool, and a few other celebrities here, out of us three, we about the only main old crew here, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So for you people out there in the world, I want you to grab all them girls, and I want you to get the ones with the longest curls, so check it out. That's <laughs> my thing. If this isn't the piece... Yes, this is the Fresh Prince. Yes! Yes! Ah, I get that Desi, yeah! I did that a few months ago, it ain't no thing. It's a little buff, you know? <laughs> It ain't no real life, Look at that. Buff. And he put up it my crew. Buff. It is rough. It is rough. What was he like when he was a little kid? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what I worry about most, as I told him, look down there in the train, like I said to you yesterday, that you know, there comes a time that I've been around here long enough to see the pendulum move back and forth quite a bit. And, of course, he doesn't understand this. And like I said, he's got this immortality that all 17-year-olds have. Yeah, it, it'll always be happening, man. That's, that's obvious, you know? Well, I like to come down here. I'm comfortable down here. This is like a, it's like a workroom. 
gra graph is a lot of relaxation. It's a lot of pride. It's dignity. It's identity. You're proud of, of some of your work, right? Yeah, you could say that. You feel proud when you see it go by, especially if it's a burner. Looks yeah, like yeah. You say that. Do you, can you understand that, Barbara? The sense of pride that he might feel at seeing something like that that he's done? I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Spray oh, scheme. Yeah. Yes, get that scheme and spank silver oh. for the film. Yes, I think so. Damn, look at the That's colors great. I threw on that piece. I think so. Look at that cloud. No, I think so. Yo, look at that. Yes. Most definitely, you know it. I think so. Yes. You can still read the one. I did it. I know you can see. You can still read it. I did it last night. <laughs> you fucking. I did that shit last night. I don't understand why nobody has ever made a film about it, for Christ's sakes. It's this magnificent subject about these vandals and criminals taking over the city of New York. Don't quote me. Do you ride the, do you ride the subway often? Do I ride the subway often? Whenever I can, whenever possible. Sometimes I get up in the middle of the night to ride the subway. Like the you have to ask me questions. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Then Channel 13 is doing their own thing because that's why they had it ready.